No matter how many times scientists warned humanity about climate change, nobody listened, and by 2019 a series of hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and droughts caused destruction all over the planet. After losing several cities, world leaders came together led by the US and they found a way to neutralize the storms with a net of thousands of satellites, each deploying countermeasures designed to impact the basic elements of weather. This net of satellites was known as Dutch Boy and was designed by Chief Architect Jake. For now it was a US-owned operation, but in three years the Dutch Boy would be transferred to an international council. One day, Jake is called to a disciplinary hearing with the US Senate subcommittee because he punched a federal inspector and brought Dutch Boy online without authorization. Jake doesn't accept the scolding and meets their words with sass, ignoring the texts from his brother Max asking him to stop. Jake explains he punched the officer because he wouldn't stop touching machine parts that almost killed him, and that he activated the Dutch boy to stop a series of storms that would have killed thousands of people. The Senate doesn't care, they just want Jake to be obedient, so they decide they'll send new staff to the station to keep an eye on things and that Jake will have to fire some of the old team members. After the meeting is over, Jake bumps into Max, who works under the US Secretary of State. Max has been chosen to be in charge of Dutch Boy, and he's decided to fire Jake because he thinks that's the best thing for the project. Jake is devastated to learn his brother can do this to his family and doesn't speak to him again. Three years later, a UN team stationed in Afghanistan gets some weird readings on their scanners and goes to check a village nearby. To their shock, the entire place is frozen and the people are dead. A recording of this finding is sent to US President Palma and his team, agreeing it must be kept secret for now. There's evidence this was caused by Dutch Boy, but the politicians don't want to shut it down because the press will immediately jump on it to find the cause. Max proposes to send someone to check on the malfunction and Secretary of State Deckham tells him to hire Jake for the job because no matter how much Max dislikes his brother, Jake is still the one that knows the station the best. Meanwhile in the Dutch Boy, the satellite responsible for Afghanistan comes back to be checked on. Engineer Habib finds some strange date in its hard drive and decides to make a copy that he hides in his locker. Afterward he tries to go back to work, but when he steps into an empty room, suddenly the doors lock themselves around him and the windows break. Habib is expelled into space and dies instantly. The next day, Max visits Jake, who is living in Florida after his divorce and gets his daughter Hannah two weekends a month. Jake doesn't want to see Max and tries to send him away, but Max tells him about Afghanistan and the airlock accident, asking him to rejoin the project. When Jake turns him down, Max changes his mind by pointing out that his invention is killing people. Later in the Hong Kong offices of the Pacific Climate Council, Long logs in the system and notices something weird about the incident in Afghanistan, so he tries to call Max to warn him only to be met by voicemail. Afterward he goes to the market to get some groceries, noticing how hot it is. In fact the heat is so bad that a cat is trying to stay inside the market fridge, and when Long accidentally drops his eggs, they fry on the pavement. Suddenly the ground starts shaking and Long notices fire whirls destroying the streets. He immediately escapes in his car, driving around all the panicking people and the constant crumbling of the buildings. Long doesn't stop until he reaches the road outside the city and the temperature lowering indicates he's out of reach, but when he turns around he discovers Hong Kong is now in ruins. When it's time for Jake to leave, Hannah cries because she thinks Jake won't return and he's always been hard to rely on, but Jake promises he'll be back. Moments later, Jake is boarding a shuttle and flying to the Dutch boy, feeling at home again in space. He meets Commander Fossbinder, the chief scientist of the station and she introduces him to her main team, which includes security officer Dusset and system analyst Duncan. They think the incident in Hong Kong was a gas explosion because that's what the news said, but Jake is sure it was caused by the same thing that froze the village. Meanwhile on Earth, Max is spending time with his girlfriend Sarah, who is part of the President's Secret Service. They're interrupted by a call from Long, who informs Max of the heat he felt before the incident happened, meaning it wasn't a gas pipe. He's tried to check on the Dutch boy to confirm his theory, but his account has been blocked, and Max discovers so has his. Someone in the government is covering up a system defect and this has the potential to cause a geostorm, which consists of simultaneous catastrophic weather events triggered all over the globe. Max promises to look into it and after hanging up, he learns Sarah has been called to work because the president has decided to do a last-minute press briefing, which sounds rather sudden. At the office, Long continues to try to log in when the power goes out. He hears some voices coming from the corridor and rushes to hide, this allows Long to watch how US agents take away his computer and all his paperwork. In the Dutch boy, Jake learns that the Afghanistan logs were wiped clean by the malfunction, so he orders the team to check the logs of the other satellites to track any signs of corruption. The next day, Max visits his friend Dana, a cybersecurity expert that works for the government IT department. He asks her to look into the blocking of the accounts, and Dana confirms someone programmed this to make it look as if it was part of a glitch, but it was definitely intentional. In the Dutch boy, Jake has a video meeting with Max, who informs him that there may be some foul play involved in the incidents. Jake is glad to hear this because he knew the Dutch boy had been built well, and Max authorizes him to retrieve the Hong Kong satellite. 
This causes an argument because Jake doesn't think he needs Max's permission to do anything, and Max reminds him that he had to clean up after Jake's dumb mistakes all the time after their parents died. He's tired of being responsible for his brother, so if Jake doesn't behave, he'll be fired again. The Hong Kong satellite arrives at the station but suddenly, the robot arm that grabs it goes crazy and begins shaking around, damaging part of the hangar before dropping the satellite. The fall absolutely destroys the satellite and the team has to salvage the few parts that survived. Unfortunately the accident created an electrical short and fried all the drives, so Jake thinks they don't have any proof of corruption to analyze. However Dissed informs him he's been looking at the video of Habib's death and he's discovered something, the panels that exploded had drives in them, and one of them got stuck in the communication tower. Jake and Fossbinder go on a spacewalk to retrieve the panel, but out of a sudden Jake's suit begins malfunctioning and he loses control of his movements. The shaking causes him to drop the panel and get hit against the station, so he ejects his jetpack and manages to hold onto a wire to avoid floating away. Moments later, Fossbinder brings him back inside, and Jake reveals he took the drive from the panel before he let go of it. When the team checks on them, Jake doesn't tell them about the drive because he's sure his suit was sabotaged by one of them. Afterward, he and Fossbinder investigate the drive and discover there are no signs of corruption, which confirms someone has been causing the so-called accidents on purpose. Jake tries to find the login information behind this programming, but he's locked out. In the meantime, Long arrives in DC and agrees to meet with Max and Sarah at a cafe. However when Long is about to cross the street, he's pushed in front of a car and hit badly. The mysterious man escapes in his own car and Sarah tries to go after him, but she isn't fast enough. Max runs to Long's side and hears him say the word Zeus before he dies. A few hours later, Max gets a call from Jake and takes it because he says it's an emergency. However Jake only wants to apologize for his behavior and reminds Max there's an unspoken code between brothers before telling the whole story of the day they went fishing with their dad. Max catches on to his intentions and rushes to see Dana to show her a recording of Jake's anecdote. Dana doesn't understand how it's an emergency and Max explains they never went fishing as kids, meaning Jake is trying to pass a message in code because he thinks he's being spied on. Max gives Dana the code they used as kids, and Dana puts together different minutes from the video to create the real message, proof of sabotage at the highest level of government, trust no one. Next, Max asks Dana to look into Project Zeus, and Dana finds a file that is double encrypted in a White House security network, which isn't hackable. She needs the right credentials to break it. Moments later, Sarah returns home and sees signs someone has broken in. She takes out her gun only to discover it's Max and Dana, who don't want anyone to know they're there. Max asks Sarah for her credentials to steal the information, and at first Sarah refuses because it would be breaking her oath, but she changes her mind when Max points out that if he's asking for something so serious it's because it's extremely important. Back to the Dutch boy, Jake and Fossbinder check the security cameras and discover Habib hid something in his locker. However when they check it out, they find the locker empty. Suddenly Dusset appears pointing his gun at them, and since he doesn't immediately kill them, Jake understands Dusset wants to find out who killed Habib too. After confirming they're all on the same side, Dusset confesses Habib's things are in a different locker. He explains he saw the security cameras too and said nothing because he thought the criminal would reveal themselves by coming to destroy the items. The trio opens the right locker and finds the copy of the drive, which reveals someone has put a virus in the station system. Meanwhile Sarah gives Dana her login information, allowing her to find the files on Project Zeus. She finds a series of simulations that end with geostorms, and Max realizes someone used those simulations to make the storms happen for real. Afterward Max has a video call with Jake to inform him someone is weaponizing the Dutch boy to attack specific cities, and Jake confirms they're doing it through the virus. He wants to shut down the Dutch boy temporarily, that way a reboot can flush out the virus. Max authorizes it, but there's a slight problem, the only one that has the kill codes is the president, and Jake doesn't trust Palma. Only someone with power can block their accounts, and it's no coincidence that in three weeks the US must hand control of Dutch boy to the International Council. Max asks Jake to keep an eye on the satellites while he finds a way to obtain the kill codes. A few hours later, President Palma is heading to Orlando for a national convention. Max approaches Sarah in secret and convinces her the conspiracy is real, so she must help him steal the codes. To get on the plane too, Max tells his bosses he's going to see his dad who lives in Florida. At that moment, the Dutch boy receives warning messages indicating 200 satellites are malfunctioning, most of them nearing critical. The consequences are soon seen on Earth, a massive hailstorm begins hitting Tokyo, and an offshore cold snap takes out half of Rio de Janeiro. Since he still can't shut down the station, Jake decides to launch the spare satellites to replace the ones causing destruction all over the world. They manage to replace the one in Rio de Janeiro before the rest of the city comes down too, but at that moment another alert comes in, a geostorm is starting. On Earth, Max sees the news of the disaster and gets the alert on his tablet too, discovering the storm is coming to Florida next. Deckham approaches him to point out he knows Max's dad is dead and demands to know the truth. Max tells him the president is behind an incoming geostorm, but Deckham has bad news, they can't get the codes from Palma because the president himself is the code. 
They need his fingerprints and his eyes to activate the shutdown, so they have no choice but to try to reason with him. At that moment, the Dutch boy crew is shocked to discover the station has initiated the self-destruct sequence on its own. They try to override the command but they're locked out by the system, and Jake realizes the only one with the knowledge to do this is Duncan. As the station begins exploding one area at a time, Jake tells the crew to evacuate before going to confront Duncan. He finds him still on the computers and begins beating him up, but Duncan has a gun hidden under his desk and uses it to get Jake off him. Then Duncan admits he did put the virus in the system, and that he accepted the corrupt payment from the government because his software engineer's salary is laughable. He also confesses he wants to watch the world burn. Jake moves quickly to disarm Duncan and beat him up again, but Duncan retrieves the gun and in the struggle, he accidentally shoots at a window. Immediately Jake runs into another room and locks the door while Duncan is ejected into space. Back in Florida, Deckham takes Max into a special room saying they'll talk to the president there, but it's all a trap. It turns out Deckham is the actual bad guy and the president knows nothing, so he tries to shoot Max for knowing too much. Max manages to escape through a back door and meets with Sarah, letting her know that a storm will kill everyone here, meaning Deckham will get rid of all the presidential candidates in one go. He gave Max control of the Dutch boy and told him to hire Jake on purpose, thinking the brothers' constant fighting would stop them from seeing the truth. Their only solution is to kidnap the president, so Max goes to get a car ready while Sarah shoots in the air, pretending she saw someone in the public about to shoot Palma. Emergency protocols are put into place while Sarah and another bodyguard escort the president, but as soon as they're alone in a corridor, Sarah knocks out the bodyguard and makes Palma come with her to a self-driving car Max hijacked. While everyone in the station evacuates, the geostorm hits Earth. Tornadoes appear in Mumbai, a major heatwave strikes Moscow, and a mega tsunami slams into Dubai. A lightning storm hits Florida, and Max and Sarah manage to get the president out right before the stadium is destroyed. Deckham escapes just in time too and sends his men after Palma, who is being told the whole truth by Max. Sarah has to drive like crazy to dodge the lightning, the destroyed roads, and the shots coming from Deckham's men. There isn't much time left, so Sarah decides to drive backward to shoot at most of the men, then hits their car with hers. The car flips and explodes when it's hit by lightning. Nearby Deckham gives his bodyguard a rocket launcher to shoot at the car with the president. The rocket hits its target and the car explodes, but suddenly Sarah appears behind Deckham and captures him. She used the self-driving system to make the car move and set up the trap for Deckham, now the police are coming to arrest him. Deckham tries to tell Palma he did it to get rid of their enemies and that he doesn't see it as genocide, because science is just playing God anyway, and he thinks Jake would agree since he invented such a powerful machine in the first place. Hearing his brother getting insulted causes Max to punch Deckham. The news begins covering all the natural disasters and the lack of response from the Dutch boy, which worries Hannah. While the last shuttle leaves, Jake decides to stay in the station because the reboot must be done manually. Fossbinder tries to stay too, but Jake sends her away. Meanwhile Palma is taken to the Kennedy Space Center and he immediately activates the kill codes. However the self-destruct sequence can't be reversed, so the brothers have to say goodbye in tears. They reconcile after all these years, and Max promises to take care of Hannah. As the station continues to self-destruct, Jake runs to put on his astronaut suit and tries to reach the computer, but the door won't take his coat. Fortunately he's surprised to discover Fossbinder did stay behind and she knows an alternate way to leave. Together they reach the computer and manually do the rebooting, Fossbinder flushes out the virus while Jake shuts down the satellites, successfully stopping the geostorm. At that moment the room explodes, and Jake and Fossbinder are left floating outside. Jake watches his creation die and discovers there's a satellite left, so they let the explosion wave push them toward it. The duo manages to get inside, but then the station finishes destroying itself and NASA loses contact with them, thus they can't control the satellite to bring it back. A light suddenly appears on the screen forming a mayday pattern, it turns out the satellite was pushed away by the explosion, meaning Jack and Fossbinder are fine. One of the evacuation shuttles goes back to pick them up, and a few hours later, everyone is safely back on Earth. Max reunites with Jake and they have their first hug in years. Six months later, Jake, Max, and Hannah go fishing and find it boring, finally understanding why the sibling's dad never took them in the first place. Jake will return to space in a week to build a new station and wants a last happy moment with his family, but he promises he'll be back. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.